Welcome to the sixth section of the Mastering Cassandra video course. Till now, we should be familiar with Spring Data Cassandra to access data in Cassandra. In this section, we'll start developing the Cassandra Web Trader application. We're going to create and configure the Cassandra Web Trader project with necessary dependencies. Then, we'll build the web user interfaces using Spring annotations and tag libs. We'll use Bootstrap 3 to beautify those user interfaces and make the application responsive. Then we'll use d3.js and its decedent, Tekken.js, to make nice looking stock charts. Lastly, we'll develop an email service that can be used to send out email trading signal alerts. First, let's create the Cassandra Web Trader web application project. In this video, we're going to use Spring Boot to simplify the web application project setup. We'll then mock up the web user interfaces with reference to the screen prototypes designed in the earlier sections. Also, we'll use Web MVC configuration to customize error pages instead of using the defaults. Let's start then. Launch STS. Create a new Spring Boot project called CWT. Name the group as com.cassandrawebtrader. Artifact as CWT. And select Web in the dependencies. Click on Finish. Now we need to add the embedded Tomcat and the JSTL dependencies in pom.xml. Then under src slash main, create a new folder for holding JSPs. Input web app slash web dash inf slash JSP as the folder name. Click on Finish. Then select com.cassandrawebtrader. Create a new class. Change the package to com.cassandrawebtrader.controller. Input home controller as the name, click on finish. Home controller is the MVC controller to serve the request at slash home. So we annotate the class with at controller and at request mapping for slash home. We then create a public method show home page to return the view name home. We annotate this method with at request mapping as well. We should make the home page similar to the screen prototype we made earlier. Create a new JSP file called home.jsp in the JSP folder just created. Click on Finish. Modify the title to Cassandra Web Trader. Add a div for logo, another div for menu, the third div for H1 Cassandra Web Trader, the fourth div for description of the content, and a final one for footer. In order to let the default view name resolver to locate the correct JSP, we need to add spring.view.prefix and spring.view.suffix, as shown in application.properties file under src slash main slash resources. This is the simplest Spring MVC web application. Okay, let's run the project as a Spring Boot application. Type in localhost 8080 slash home in the address bar. See? It works, right? Excellent. Though it doesn't look very attractive now, we'll improve the look and feel later on. If we change the URL to localhost 8080, this error page is the default provided by Spring. It's okay, but we need to customize the error pages to use our own design. So, let's create a class called webconfig in the package com.cassandrawebtrader.config. Click on Finish. Webconfig is basically a Java config file that we created for Spring Web MVC, and therefore we annotate it with at configuration. We can customize Spring to map each error to different error pages. We'll add a bean by a method to return an anonymous embedded servlet container customizer. We'll override the customize method here to map the three HTTP error status codes to their respective error pages. For example, an unauthorized HTTP request gives 401 status code, which will map to 401.html file, so on and so forth. Now we create 401.html in src slash main slash resources slash static folder. Click on finish. Amend the error page at will. Change the title, add the page heading, then add a user-friendly description. Copy and paste 401.html to create 404.html and 500.html. Amend them as well. All right. Restart the application. Go to localhost 8080 again. 
This time, Spring shows us our customized error page. Great! That brings us to the end of this video. Next, we'll create input forms and introduce the relevant annotations.